All right, so now we get to count. You're like, what? I, I know how to count. I have 10 fingers, right? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Counting is ginormous. And you've been doing a lot of counting through the class, like with measurement, um, you know, statistics, probability, but there is actually a special way of counting. We tend to think of counting as addition, right? Oh, one apple, two apples, three apples. But it's so much bigger than that and so much more than that. And so we're going to get into just more sophisticated ways of counting. So let's just like kind of start with an easy, easy thing. So you go into a uh, restaurant with a fixed menu. They have a small menu of three appetizers and two desserts. If you can choose exactly one of each, how many different possibilities do you have? Okay, so I have three appetizers. So I have appetizer one, appetizer two, and appetizer three. And that means I could pick a, a dessert one for each of these, right? Or I still have the three appetizers and or I could pick it with dessert two. So if you look at this, how many possibilities do you have? Well, th I have, here's one possibility, two possibility, three possibility, four, five. And you can see that we have six outcomes here, right? We have six possibilities. Right. Well, what did I just do? I just counted them, right? I just counted how many balls I counting, right? Um, but then we have to now be more sophisticated a little bit. We have to look at the fact that here's six and I had six possibilities, right? And I have three appetizers and two dessert. So the question I would ask is if I have appetizers and desserts and that equal six possibilities, We could see that I had three appetizers and two desserts. Well, what is the relationship between three and two and six? That's right, right? Three times two is six. So what I ended up really doing, instead of writing all this out, is that I could have taken three and two, multiplied it, and got six right away. Because think about those restaurants, especially something like Cheesecake Factory, where they have like a gazillion things on there. It's like 20 pages, right? And um, they we can't be writing every type of combination, permutation type of thing, right? So we have to have more sophisticated ways of counting. So the first one is the multiplication rule. If we have a certain number of choices, right? We have three choices for appetizers, two choices for dessert. In N categories, right, N, cho N choice, and P, I'm sorry, <laughs> N categories, we have two categories here, right, then we can just multiply, right? So if I have two categories, I mean, sorry, th three choices in one category and two choices in another category, then I could just multiply the choices. So now let's go ahead and let's say, okay, now we're going to go to a different restaurant and now we have eight choices for an appetizer, 11 choices for a main course and five choices for dessert. So this means that I have one choice for appetizer, another choice for the main and another choice for dessert. Using the basic multiplication rule, I have now three categories and in each category, I have 11, or sorry, eight choices for appetizer, 11 for the main, and five for the dessert. If I multiply those three, we get 440 different, different, and that's the key word, different meal options. Okay, so when we have the category, so let me label this. So down here are the categories 
And up here are the selections or the choices that we have. So you, so now, as long as I can identify the categories and then the choices, I can know what I need to multiply. So for example, if I have 21 novels, 18 volumes of poetry, on a reading list for a college English course, how many different ways can a student select one novel and one volume of poetry? Once again, we put it in the categories right? We have novels and then poetry. So we have categories on the bottom and then our choices on top. How many choices of novels do we have? That's right, 21. And how many choices for poetry do we have? 18. Great. Multiplication rule, we can multiply these. So we can go ahead and put this in the calculator if we don't know 21 times 18 <laughs> by heart, which I don't. <laughs> and we get 378. So there are 378 different ways to select readings. So you have to be able to identify the categories and then identify choices. I use this format. I like this format of like hangman spaces with like the letter, the, you know, the first letter of the category. And then I see the numbers. That way I understand like I'm identifying a category with the number of choices I have. And then I multiply. Of course, like some students just know to multiply, but as you're starting out, just try the hangman first and then kind of develop the skills of being a little quicker and just multiplying.